Hello. Welcome to Body Changes Month. I'm chatting with Andrea Marsh. Andrea, tell us what you do. Hi, I'm Andrea from Copsal Menopause. I'm a Shatsu and Chinese medicine practitioner, and I help women understand and alleviate their symptoms with natural methods. Love it. So this month we're looking at how our bodies change. Obviously, lots of us find that our body shape changes and that sort of then it's kind of everywhere, isn't it? Like everything's changing. I, th I think for me, the first um, physical thing I started noticing that was that my skin was getting a lot drier. So then being totally vain, it's like, ah, wrinkles, what can I do about it? <laughs> that that for me was probably that and my hair getting thinner, I think, were my first physical changes. Mine was complete change of body shape, like yeah. total redistribution of where I held fat and how my body was made. It was really odd, really odd. And I was going to say, how quickly did that come on? Because I know mine came on over COVID and lockdown, so I don't think I can blame menopause. No, that was in the first six months when I didn't even know what perimenopause was. Yeah. Just suddenly I started having a belly. I'd never had a belly before. So just lots of things changed. Anyway, back to what you were talking about. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure there's lots of other chats on belly fat. So I thought I would take a slightly different approach today. Because like I said, my first symptom was that my facial skin started changing. And then of course, then there's, um, you start getting a bit jowly. Some people, some women, you know, the different skin types. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I don't want jowls. What can I do about it? And um, years ago, I was told when I was when I was um, studying to be um, a radiographer that if you're wrinkling on the outside, you're wrinkling on the inside, and I've never forgotten that. <laughs> but it it what it links to, and it it's all right to worry that your face is either getting wrinkly or saggy, and it's all right to do something about it. And we'll look at the what you can do in a minute. But it's to understand if it's going on on the outside, what's going on, on the inside, and and what kind of symptoms are affected by it. So with the drop in estrogen we have skin changes and you know the same cellular structure of skin on the face is the same cellular structure that's going on in your body whether that's your arteries uh internal membranes so like the, the soft vaginal tissue um um, things that hold vital organs in places um so if if any you see these effects going on on your face they are going on throughout your body um so it's good if you do something to help your face and skin and nails and hair all those things you know hair skin and nails the classics you will be helping what's going on internally um because our mother's generation are the prolapse generation so we need to avoid prolapses um, vaginal dryness is a, a massive issue and um also you know heart health actually the um, arteries so the common link in all of this is that as estrogen um drops um so does your collagen levels are intrinsically linked this is why collagen is such a, a massive market right now so there are two things that collagen does it keeps the elasticity of your skin and it keeps the lubrication of your skin and then you can start to understand what the estrogen, collagen, elasticity, lubrication links, how that is just going to have a myriad effect throughout the body. Because if the elasticity and lubrication of fine tissue starts drying out and it get, gets weak, it's easier for infection, easier for tearing, uh, weaker, not going to hold the vital organs up. Um, and then ironically, we get something called arterial stiffness. Uh, it used to be known as hardening of the arteries um and so then that makes puts pressure on the whole cardiovascular system so it goes on and on and on so th there is a reason why you know with hrt they say oh you know why estrogen fix all of these things so you know if hrt works for you that's absolutely fine that's your choice um the road i've gone down because of my chinese medicine hat because i'm just hypersensitive to anything estrogenic even if it's um sunflower seeds <laughs> so yeah. if i can't take sunflower seeds i'm not going to be able to take hrt just just makes me sick so i've i've researched and gone down the completely natural route so i'm here to support those women that either don't want hrt or actually still have symptoms even though they're on hrt yes yeah. um so this is why i've ended up really understanding how the loss of estrogen the knock-on effects to various things going on in the body and skin is a big one so i'm just going to go slightly tangential but then we'll come back to what we can do to help it but obviously in your um chinese medicine led 
take on everything there is always a an internal organ that is linking to symptoms that we're seeing so what's the skin showing us is it telling us about an internal organ yeah funny well from the chinese medicine point of view there's a few things going on and again that's really important to talk about so if you get a rashy itchy skin then we're looking at liver so actually skin on its initial pass is the quality of the lungs okay so if your lungs aren't great it's going to manifest as very dry skin if you've then got any emotional issues attached to the lung that can also come out through the skin so like say you keep getting massive outbreaks of of, of, of dry spots um, then we'd be looking at you know maybe you've just lost a parent or somebody special in your life so but probably one of the biggies during menopause specifically is itchy skin and itchy skin comes back to the liver you know when the liver can't detox we talk about yes. this a lot night yes. sweats one to three a.m just the, the knock-on effect of liver through the body so normally my go-to when somebody goes oh my gosh my skin i just so although probably estrogen is playing a role as well um estrogen if your liver isn't working properly estrogen isn't metabolized correctly so again i still come back to liver before uh, if anybody said should i add in estrogen because my skin is bad i say no let's clean up your liver and then see how you are and then there's still the case for adding in because there's, there's always a case for adding in what the body is missing but let's also clean up our house. <laughs> it's a bit like one of those programs, isn't it? They go, I've got to leave my house. It's a mess and it's full. But actually, when the professionals have been in and finished tidying and cleaning it up, they go, oh, my house is really nice and it really works for me now and I don't need to leave it. It's kind yes. of that kind of thing. Let's, let's clean up what your own body is doing first before then seeing what we need to add into the body. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. I like yeah. it. So... Let's assume that people, I mean, obviously to, to clean everything up, then people are going to want to work with you or another practitioner. It's not something that we can just sort of leap into, but what are things that someone can do today yeah. to start sort of halting these changes if they're not yeah. comfortable with them? No, do you know what? There is one simple thing. And Good. I did write, write a blog. You love it when I do one simple thing, don't you? Yes. I wrote a blog about it last year and I said, is this vitamin your hero vitamin in menopause? And it's got a really high number of views. <laughs> and what is the vitamin? It's, it's because people almost scoff. It is so simple. It is vitamin C. It's it That's doesn't. Simple. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? So vitamin c is a hero vitamin if you go to cotswold menopause forward slash blog look for that blog just or just google vitamin c menopause i'll probably come up it's it's crazy what it does yes you can get it off the supermarket shelf um the only thing i'd say about supermarkety stuff is check the ingredients you don't want preservatives and fillers and things you just want vitamin c um so what vitamin C does is it boosts our internal collagen. Okay. So I, four years ago, it was locked down. I'd had a bad leg injury, had to have an operation. The operation didn't heal. So I had to take things into my own hands. And so when I researched vitamin C and collagen, I took the pair of them. And not only did the, the wound close up and heal in about two weeks when it hadn't done for like three, four months, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> hello jawline <laughs> so i am religious about taking my vitamin c so i would say when people go oh collagen what collagen should i take and i was like oh, that is the magic question isn't it firstly i say just take decent amounts of vitamin c um so that's like one to two thousand milligrams a day um and you take it over time because yes you do we some of this out but if you take some before bed it's going to stay in your body overnight um so start with again start with vitamin c before you go out and spend money on expensive collagens um and when people say what type of collagen i say best one is five types so it comes from all the different animal sources okay. so it's a problem if you're a vegan 
jewelry's out if vegan collagen works but then vegan collagen's got a high dose of vitamin c in it so oh there we go <laughs> get, get the vitamin c yeah <laughs> um yeah so uh it, vitamin c does all sorts of stuff for the body it's immunity and if your immunity is better your allergies are better so this is why i call it the hero vitamin because it's making you healthier <laughs> and you may start with wanting your skin to look better and the way to make your skin to look better is to look healthier and I read some no it was a neuroscientist said this the other day there's this great neuroscientist can't remember her name <laughs> she's on Instagram and she said if you want to understand your brain health look at your hair skin nail health and I thought that is so simple and so beautifully put because, you know, women have got brain fog. Women who have got stunning skin and great nails and long, luscious hair shouldn't have brain fog. You know, it, because your body takes nutrients in an order. And unfortunately, brain is one of those that's a little bit at the end of the line. So if your hair, skin and nails aren't looking good, the likelihood is you're not going to resolve your brain fog. But when people start working with me or they, they follow my guide, my liver detox, or they take the supplements, they go, oh my gosh, my nails have never been so good in years. If your nails are good, then your liver is good. If your liver is good, the likelihood is you're not going to have night sweats, itchy skin, um, sluggishness, nausea, lethargy, lack of motivation, um allergies your estrogen will be processed better um your thyroid will work better a lot of the times if you sort out your liver you sort out your thyroid um so yeah just just looking at the quality of your hair skin and nails and working to improve that so it doesn't matter if you come at it from point of vanity but actually think you know yes i want to look better on the outside but actually how is it helping me on the inside so vitamin C and collagen, and we will be all neuroscientists within a week. Yay! And clean up your liver. <laughs> and clean up your liver. Always. That's always the message from your one. <laughs> That's always the little one we yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to work with me if you want to clean up your liver. I have created a liver detox guide. Um, I think it's called Relieve Your Heat Symptoms because um, when the liver's stuffed up, you're normally going to feel hotter. Which in this summer weather is probably something that quite a lot of people are going to want to yeah. resolve so that they can at least have their basic body temperature feeling a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, I've literally just done an article on sleep, you know, how, you know, clean up your liver and your sleep will be better. So awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much, Andrea, as You're always. Welcome.